Hi guys, it's Paolo from Synthmania. Today I wanted to make a video on um, Roland sample CDs for the S series of samplers from the Universe of Sounds uh, collection. I have mentioned these CDs and how I like them in my latest video of uh, 90s sample CDs. But before listening to a few sound examples from these CDs, I wanted to show perhaps to the younger viewers who may not be familiar with SCSI, how the transfer from computer to the actual sampler was achieved back in the day. All right, so I bought this product. I believe I got this in 1996 and it was the Sonic Foundry Professional CD Factory, your complete PC solution for burning audio CDs and include, including CD arc. That back in the day, it wasn't that easy to record and make a, a CD, an audio CD. You had to have a CD burner. And I got this box, this com combination that came with CD Architect from um, Sonic Foundry, which was the original maker of uh, Sonic Forge, Sound Forge, the, the sound editor that I've been using for several years now. And um, they were bought by Sony and now they re recently got bought by Magix, I believe. But this one included also a SCSI CD-ROM drive in it and that's why I bought it. And uh, I was able to make several CDs. So you had double use out of this box. You could uh, transfer sounds to samplers because it was a SCSI CD-ROM. And also you had a CD architect so you, can, you could create your own CDs, including Fancola Paperola, which is a CD that I made back then on uh, 70s funk and maybe one day I'll subject you to the songs contained in this CD. Uh, there is even a younger me inside playing the Hammond organ. This was a C3 and um, I was playing, this was a PVT40 bass I really love that bass, I regret selling it. And um, wearing some sunglasses from of questionable uh, look. I wouldn't trust this guy. Anyway, this is a story for another time. Well, let's open up Professional CD Factory and let's take a look how SCSI works before listening to examples from the CD-ROMs. Actually, I saved the receipt for this box, so I actually bought this in um, 1998. And it came with um, a SCSI cable, power cable, and 48 objects from uh, Lightroom Gold. This is all software demos and <laughs> Look at how 1990s these things are, these uh, logos. <laughs> and here is the professional factory, CD factory quick start, installation guide for the CR, CDR drive and SCSI controller card for Windows 95 and Windows NT 4.0. Yep, you need at least a 486, 33 <laughs> or higher, wow. Here are more microboards, presents, uh, oh yeah, okay, so this is if you wanted to record a lot of CDs at the same time. And these things were not cheap, I remember these this multi CD-ROM machines, burning machines. Thank you for your ordering from Safe Harbor. And this is the manual for the CDR drive unit. CDR Laufwerk. Unity, okay, all right, instruction manual. 
And this is the software that came with it. This is a Sonic Foundry CD Architect. I use this uh, software a lot to create um, albums that I was making back in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. And it still works. I, I haven't used it in a while, but there's no need to today with modern computers. This is the manual of Soundforge XP that came with it. This is the manual for CD Architect 4.0. This is a SCSI adapter, a Terminator, Terminator. And now let's get to the star of the... Uh, it's, it's, sorry, I'm holding the camera with the other hand. It's kind of hard to... I need to get a... GoPro or something like that, something that uh, allows me to have both hands free at the same time. Hold on. Yeah, I even found the price for this product. And back in 1996, uh, in 1998, this was $659.99. Not cheap, not cheap back then. There was a lot of money back in the 90s. And here it is. Here is the CD-ROM SCSI drive. Play right. It's the back of the unit. And uh, for the younger viewers who may not be familiar with SCSI, if I remember correctly, it stood for Small Computer Systems Interface. And it was basically a, a protocol that allows data transfer from uh, computers to other devices. And um, actually, people used to call SCSI, still can't see it, I remember, because I had problem with SCSI a lot of times uh, because it wasn't the most reliable protocol. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to terminate this, you have to unplug that, you have to try hundreds of the different combinations to make it work. But at the end, it did work. Okay, let's set, set this drive up and um, let's listen to some examples from the CD-ROMs. Okay, so as my kids would say to me, I've done a fail because the operating system for the 2.24 version 2.24 for the S760 that I had inserted in the floppy uh, is corrupted. It doesn't work, and of course I have uh, I have copies of them, but I cannot find them tonight. Uh, and I try loading them. The original system disk that came with uh, the S760, but it doesn't support. It doesn't seem to support any of the CD-ROM players that I have. And uh, for the S550, my two CD5 players that I have are, are both broken at this time. The the eject doesn't work anymore. So instead of uh, playing CD-ROMs tonight, we'll we'll play a few. Floppies from um, from the Roland S550 library. These are cool as well. Okay, so since we have the Roland sampler out here, let's play a few discs from the Roland S550 library. This is the designer trap set number one plus sequencer base. This is the designer set. This is sequencer base number one. Sequencer base three. Sequencer base four. Sequencer base 5. 
sequencer bass 5. This diskette is industrial strength techno synth percussion. It's very 1980s sounding diskette. This patch is industry tech. Typical industrial science sounds of the 80s, very Depeche Mode style. Next one is Velo Rezo Effects. This is Timba Tumba. This is clink and clank. This one is called jar and log. This is called Pop and Jar. This one is called Zap Percussion. Eerie One. Eerie too. Blockhead. Noisy one. This disc is called FM Filter Number One and it features samples from uh, the DX7. It is very 1980s, 80s sounding. This patch is called Dynamite DX1. DX electric guitar number one. DX electric guitar two. Rob Bass Super Bass One Super Bass Two Bell 
Pulse One FM. Super mix number one. This is called the Air Disc 1 and this patch is called Choir 2. This patch is called Ooze and Mmms. like this patch on the Roland S series. Low. This is Voicey One. Definitely some Fairlight influences on this patch. Vox 1. Glasses 1. With all the technology like this, you can uh, definitely hear the loop points, but it's part of the charm of this instrument. Combo Box 1. Port Bottle One. Classic 1980s sound. And this one is a combination disc with several types of sounds on it. This patch is drums percussion.
This patch is called slap bass. Fretless bass. Synth bass. Brass section. This is called solo trumpet. Electric piano. Synth one. Definitely 1980s sounding. Anyway, thank you for watching, and sorry again for the mishap on the operating system on the Roland sampler. But I hope that this little exploration into older technology has been interesting to you. Thanks for watching, I'll see you at the next video.